Looking for strategies to help you protect your portfolio in these uncertain times? Visit robblack.com. Robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. October 3rd. Goodbye, September. Hello, October. We are on our way towards the end of the year. I kind of like this time of year. I like the weather breaking. And I like the crispness in the air. Yesterday, the Nasdaq was a winner up two thirds of 1%, but the SP 500 and the Dow, not so much. October starting out kind of like September ended. Sphere Entertainment. That's right. That big building is publicly traded. Uh, they're going to make money on advertising on the outside of it, not just ticket sales on the inside, but advertising on the outside. Um, Sphere Entertainment was up 11% yesterday. I did not know it was going to be publicly traded until yesterday. I thought it was going to be part of MSG Group, which uh, Dolan owns, but he made it his own little entity. Elsewhere, and just to know how much that slid by me, uh, it probably didn't come public yesterday. 10-year treasury sits at 4.69%. Wow. My savings are loving it. My investments are struggling with it. Goes with the territory. Buy great companies. They'll do, they'll do fine. In high interest rate environments and low interest rate environments. Sam Bankman Friedman. Sam Bankman Frieds. Um, trial starts today. I'm kind of fascinated by this because for some reason, he's the poster boy turned pariah. I kind of don't like him. I, think, I don't know if it's physical. He repulses me or if it's a social. He hurt a lot of people. If it's a wow, how greedy do you have to be? But I have a, a vitriol reaction. Just It's just bad when I see him. Federal prosecutors accuse him of using the now bankrupt FTX to steal billions of dollars from customers and investors. Beyond a pyramid scheme, just greed, 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 times 100 million. Um, prosecutors plan to introduce 1,300 pieces of evidence. Wow. They're going to bring up his ex-girlfriend in a polyamorous relationship or something like that. Alameda CEO, Caroline Ellison. What's fascinating is um, he's the son of two lawyers. She's the son of two mathematicians. Um, I don't know if that tells you anything about marrying a smart person or marrying a farmer. Tells me I should have probably, uh, 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 he could get 110 years in prison. I don't know what to say about that, but we'll go with that. Um, Trump trial kicked off yesterday. I forgot to check the box the jury. Uh, they wanted a trial by jury, not by judge. Could you imagine that it's completely true? And it looks like it is because he's talking about how he's not getting a trial by jury. The attorney general seeking $250 million. The only thing that I really like about this case, and this shows I'm not pro-Republican. I'm not anti-Democrat. I'm not. You can't label me politically, I hope. I hope I'm somewhere in the middle. But the only thing I like about this is it teaches you don't always believe what you hear. I've never been a fan of the Trump University or the Trump real estate or the Trump seminars. Um, I was never a fan of The Apprentice. I was never a, a fan of his books. He just doesn't appear that bright to me. And when you inherit money, um, I just don't see it. And again, I'm, I'm critical on a lot of people. Matt Gatz tries to oust McCarthy as speaker. That's a lot of drama. Microsoft CEO says Google has an unfair advantage testifying yesterday in the antitrust lawsuit against Google. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella said the search giant steals, making it the default on Apple devices have helped lead it to ubiquity. And um, they don't see themselves as a true rival. Keep in mind, Satya Nadella, Nadella tried to sell Bing to Apple years ago, and Apple wasn't interested. <laughs> It's tough to see who you're going to side in on this one because in the end, I think we all think Google is a better search engine. So do you blame Apple for getting a couple billion plus dollars a year from Google for the right to put it there? Or should they have put up and make it easier to change your... your but again, I think the, the quality is Google's. The two scientists who uh, really 
went far with mRNA, uh, won the Nobel Prize yesterday in physiology or medicine. Um, I think that is a, from what I've read and my knowledge base is collegiate. Um, it's not PhD, but from what I've read, that is a really cool breakthrough that's going to help my children's children quite a bit. Um, Taylor Swift may have turbocharged the U.S. economy with her tour, but Katy Perry inadvertently inspired a campaign to amend the nation's real estate laws. Supposedly, she's a very horrible person to do business with in real estate. Like if you're on your deathbed and she wants your mansion, she'll bring the papers to your hospital. She bought a Santa Barbara mansion for $14.2 million, but then the uh, man who sold it to her, who has a neurogenitive disease, tried to renege on the sale a few days later. Be a Katy Perry law. That's not the kind of law that you want named after you. I don't think. Mr. Beast is going to advertise his Feastables chocolate bars in a patch on the Charlotte Hornets jerseys in the NBA's first tie-up with the influencer. Mr. Beast and influencers are gaining in power in the world. I saw uh, my kids love him. I asked my kids who Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel are. They have no clue. But they know who Mr. Beast is. You would have to take from my kids' dead fingers. Um, his is social media accounts. Whereas if you were to say, could you live a year without ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox? He'd be like, sure. Birkenstock is targeting a $9.2 billion valuation in upcoming IPO. I don't get that one. Not bad for a sandal. Paris Hilton has made a revenue sharing deal to create content for X as the platform tries to push video and live shopping content. Um, I, when did Paris Hilton been relevant? 20 years ago? I don't know if I have the answer to that one. You know what I'm saying? That one just feels like that's a little bit odd. Now, the Mr. Beast thing is fascinating. Mr. Beast, by the way, um, if you haven't watched his videos, I think they're kind of likable. I'm not saying I'm all in on it or anything like that. I'm saying they're kind of likable. <clears throat> so a couple more thoughts on Mr. Beast. Um, he came out yesterday and showed a, a deep fake where someone was using his image and his voice in a video that he did not create. And it's going to be a problem owning your own digital image. I do a radio show right now, a podcast, broadcast, whatever you want to call it, where I'm getting paid to do it. Who owns my my voice? Who owns Rob Black and Your Money? I do. I've got a copyright on that, baby. Um, but could you imagine? That's going to be half. That's something that we're going to have to deal with at some point in time. And the longer we wait, the more likely it's going to get abused. So let's talk a little bit about today because we've kind of hit all the headlines. If you were told the 10-year treasury is higher this morning and that equity stocks uh, futures are lower, would you be surprised? Probably not. It feels like September 4th instead of October 3rd. It just seems to keep going on. The 10-year treasury notes up four basis points to 4.72%, flirting with 0.4.75, kind of a round number thing going on there. Everyone's watching 4202. That's 200 day moving average on the S&P 500. If we break beneath it, there's a thought that we could um, kind of get some work done in at lower lows. I like when markets go lower. I like when they retest. I don't want the NASDAQ up 30% this year. If the NASDAQ ends up 20%, I'd be like, that's a great year. If the NASDAQ goes up 10% for the year, I'd be like, that's, that's solid. It was not as good as we were. But this is too far too fast. A lot going on today including Getz versus McCarthy, <laughs> Trump versus the civil case, federal courts against SBF, and much, much more. I'm Rob Black. Thanks for listening to the show. Think you're in good shape for retirement? Find out how you're really doing with the seven tests of retirement readiness. Join Rob Black and CFP Chad Burton of EP Wealth Advisors, Saturday, October 28th in San Mateo. They'll walk you through these seven tests to find out whether you are really ready for the retirement you want. Rob will provide timely commentary, and Chad will share specific strategies for taxes, income, long-term care, safe money, investing, life goals, and more. If you have at least $500,000 in investable assets and want to retire better, 
pass on your estate, and minimize taxes, this event is for you. Find out if you're on the right track with the seven tests of retirement readiness, Saturday, October 28th, 10 a.m. to noon at the Crown Plaza in San Mateo. Space is limited, so sign up today at robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. Can you pass all seven tests? Sign up today online at robblackshow.com. So in just a second, I'm going to tell you some do's and don'ts with retirement. And these are really simple and they're just nice reminders. But right now I want to talk about something that I see is very troubling. Americans are still spending like there's no tomorrow. Concerts, trips, designer handbags, you name it, we're spending money on it. Um, It's got me concerned. Only in as so much as I can really give a, a hoot. I've saved enough for retirement. I've talked about saving enough for retirement. I didn't really live large in my 20s when other friends were settling down and getting married and making babies. I had business forward, grinding my business forward, finding people like CFP, Chad Burton, who could help educate you um, on financial issues. As I, thought, I saw that as my influencer niche before there was a thing called influencers. Uh, why should Americans not be spending so much right now? Because interest rates are high. Inflation is high. Pandemic savings have, have, have dwindled. Labor market's starting to cool. Americans spent 5.8% more in August than last year. Now, inflation's at 4%, so it's above and beyond inflation. Delta Airlines reported record revenue in the second quarter. Ticketmaster sold over 295 million event tickets in the first six months of 2023, up 18% year over year. That's a tough one to say where we are. So we're not going to totally fall in love with uh, Ticketmaster numbers, but let's just say it's strong. We could all kind of agree on that. Um, I've got a family member who, I guess it's a niece. So I don't have to pay for anything, but her family, not her family, but her and her fiance are getting married in Italy next summer. And I'm just like, wow. (laughs) Having talked to um, the father of the bride, there's a stepmother of bride, there's a mother of the bride, and there's a stepfather of the bride. They're all being hit up hard for money. And I just go, is that a little... A little much. I mean, we became married right at the end of a recession or right during a recession. It looks like it could happen, at least a softening of the economy. Um, yeah, I've, I've seen stories like in the Wall Street Journal about a man who spent $1,600 on Taylor Swift air ticket tours and then $3,500 on a bachelor party trip to Spain. Uh, while his fiance, you know, rents over three thousand dollars, they're going to try to put five thousand dollars down. Uh, they're going to try to spend five thousand dollars a month on a two hundred thousand dollar down payment on an apartment. Which I'm not against anyone ever buying real estate as long as you've been doing it for the long term five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five, thirty, thirty five, forty years. You're not doing it for five months. Hawaii's booming. Pre-pandemic, a family of four, I used to say a trip to Hawaii was about $5,000, $6,000 if you go high end, $4,000 if you go low end. Now it feels like $10,000 is the the average price. So I think we're spending too much. And again, why? Interest rates are up. Inflation remains high. Pandemic savings have shrunk. Labor market's cooling. Okay, let's do some do's and don'ts about retirement. Um, first things before I do that, um, Chipotle is testing automation for burrito bowls and salads. And Jamie Dimon from Morgan Stanley said something fascinating today. He goes in, not your generation, Rob, but your children's generation, their lifetime, a three and a half day work week will be very likely. And because of AI, artificial intelligence, whoa, Chipotle test automation for burrito bowls and salads. Testing a robot made with hyphen technology that can assemble burrito bowls and salads. The technology would only be used for digital orders. Restaurants are investing heavily in automation. It may be years before the technology pays off. Pretty interesting, right? Are you with me or are you against me on this one? Um, Some do's and don'ts on retirement. Do know how much income 
you'll need from your investments and when you'll need it. You got to start start with going to ssa.gov and seeing what social security can give you. Take a look at your portfolio. If it's a million dollars, you might be able to get $40,000 a year of income from it. You could right now in a money market fund, but for the past 15 years, you couldn't. So where do you assume? You kind of write up a best case scenario, a normal scenario, and a worst case scenario. What if interest rates go to 2%? What if interest rates go to 6%? So you do want to know about your income five to 10 years before your retirement. You do want to tune out the noise. I think there's too much financial media, including myself. The nice thing about me is I I try to not stray into strong opinion. I try to just just stick with my my fundamentals. Just the facts, a million dollars will pay 40,000. Things like that. Um, but also like you got to learn how to, how do you choose Medicare? Google that YouTube, that video today. There's no one size fits all is what I'm trying to say. Do prepare for the unexpected. Um, in the last two years, I've solidified my emergency fund for retirement years. Before I was kind of like, okay, I'm 80% funded. I'm 85% funded for my emergency fund. I won't go back on that. I won't use that money now for an investment. Even if the market goes down 40%, I won't go, you know, my emergency fund, even though I'm five, 10, 15 years from retirement, I don't know which one of those three it is, but it's one of the three. So have that emergency fund kicking for you. Do keep planning your track um, on retirement. If you have over 500 to $2 million easily, I can say you're going to benefit from a CFP. I use a CFP at EP Wealth Brad. And um, for instance, part of my wealth yesterday, we, we moved another uh, couple million. We've moved almost, yeah, well, we've moved about two and a half million recently. And that's in the last hundred days to some more, you know, uh, call options on a stock that I own a concentrated position in. And There's a company called Spider Rock who does the calls for me. So far, I've made money every single month in my call options. And the month that I didn't, um, I bought back my options. So I didn't have to pay for them. I didn't have to lose them and sell them. Um, Is it a foolproof strategy? It is not. Consult a broker advisor for the next one. Anything stocks ever mentioned on the show. Um, So I am staying on track with the CFP. He's also reminding me on estate planning updates. He's also reminding me on, do you want to do college funding? Now that we're in the fourth quarter of the year, do you want to give, uh, donate any of your money to your children? as a way of managing to down your taxes. That's what a CFP does to keep you on track. Um, next thing next, if you had an idea when you're 20 years old that a million dollars was going to be enough inflation, it's not. A million dollars is not going to be enough in retirement. You're going to need more than that. Um, if that was your goal 20 years ago or 30 years ago, you have to adjust for inflation. Um, don't overlook the fees that you're paying. With a CFP, yes, you do pay typically 80 basis points to 1%, but you're getting the investment management, plus you're getting all the other services that a financial planner offers, including taxes, estate planning, college planning, managing your heirs, things along those lines, and much, much more. Um, don't chase the sizzle. Try not to get too caught up in sexy times. Try not to get too uh, emotional in down times. Those are your do's and don'ts. Big event coming up at the end of October. It is a retirement event with CFP Chad Burton in San Mateo. It's a Saturday day. Learn more information at robblackshow.com. What's the best way to choose a financial advisor? Download our guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. Nervously nearing retirement. That's what I was just trying to talk about, the do's and do's with retirement. The do's, the don'ts, you get the idea. Apple is considering a $2 billion move that could change the streaming landscape. They're bidding for the global broadcasting rights to Formula One, which could be worth as much as $2 billion per year. That figure would double what the Formula One group is currently receiving from different networks across the world. Um, I wish I knew more about Formula One, right? Disney owns the U.S. rights to F1 until 2025. Their deal is worth an estimated 75 to 90 million per year. 
There's interest amongst Netflix, Amazon, and ABC Universal. F1 has deals that will stretch at least until 2029 with Sky Sports in the UK. But Apple's aggressiveness, aggressiveness has been reported coming after the early success of its 10-year, $2.5 billion deal with MLS. Apple TV airs every match of the U.S. Soccer League and got a massive boost with legendary star Messi came to the United States. Um, Apple also has a seven-year deal with MLB for Friday Night Baseball. Not that into sports, but I, I see I see where they're going here, or something along those lines, right? Um, let's keep moving forward with some of the headlines that are out there for you. Um, quick commentary on Jim Cramer. Um, first and foremost, there's a lot that I like about him. It's going to sound like I don't. He works with CNBC. We all know him. He's the screaming money guy, right? He's made some incredibly bad calls that have hurt people. Um, telling you Bear Stearns wasn't going to go under. And I'm like, it's too toxic for me. Wasn't too much too toxic for him, and then he looked like a fool. He gets in these weird modes where he has to be right. I think it's a psychological issue on something. But I woke up, I went through my tweets about three in the morning to see if there's any breaking news there. And uh he was calling people who shorted or who sold micron idiots. And I'm just like, do we have to use name calling in everything we do now? Um he owns a position, and I don't think he should have a platform like CNBC. Um, with that said, maybe even social media. You know, on TV, he discloses positions that he has and doesn't, but on Twitter, he doesn't. Um, that's kind of weird for me. Um, because you'll hear a show later today about Bitcoin, or about gold, or about this AI stock. And the SEC wants to protect you, the average person, by saying, okay, this guy has an interest in it. And you may not be able to trust everything they say. So September was a down month. And when there's down months, I am looking for quality stocks that uh, I might want to own in the days and years to come. You know, I own too much Apple. I, I already know that. So I don't have to buy more. In some of my positions, I reinvest the dividends. So I do buy more. Apple stock is down about 12% from its high for the year. It trades about 26 times analyst estimates, which is expensive at 18 times the SP 500. Um, at its peak, it was around 30. If it were to get down to 20, I think people would lose their mind and, and jump all over it. Um, they're having some problems with iPhone 15. They're tending to run a little hot. And with that, it tends to, it's going to be a software fix more than likely is the expectation. So maybe you fell in love with its speed, but then you're, it's, they're going to have to throttle it back so it doesn't burn out and flame on you. I think Starbucks is a great name. It's 20% off. It's 20, 23 high. I'm showing you what I do. I do like shopping lists and I have painter's tape and I'll, I'll tape shopping lists to my walls. Um, Sales should grow at 10% annually over the next three years at Starbucks. That's not too bad. They're adding millions of new reward customers each year through people who order through the app. It's a perfect experience. Ordering through Pete's Coffee and Starbucks, it's, it's, it's flawless in my mind. Netflix is 20% off. It's from its late July high. Um, some things that are going through my head is Stranger Things will probably come back at some point, right? And... The other crazy one with the game show where people died in South Korea. Oh, now I'm forgetting. Um, that one will come back too. So, Squid Games. Um, I don't know how many shows you're looking forward to coming back. Um, I don't have a good vibe on that. But Netflix doesn't offend me as a stock. Um, I think they'll benefit enormously from the U.S. strike on the writers. Uh, because for five months, they haven't had to produce things. And they just showed old shows like Breaking Bad and 
got you back into some other shows. Um, a lot of horror stuff comes out in October. So I guess we're kind of looking forward to that, right? What are some other stocks that I look at as high quality? Um, Amazon, although they do have a Department of Justice thing going on. Netflix, Starbucks, Apple. Those are kind of like some ideas that are out there. Um, there's a couple other stocks that I'd like to get to a position in that I don't have a position in, but I don't want to start into that right now. A rough September is over. Um, now we move into October a little bit more friendly. Historically, the market has tended to rally in October after there's a 5% pullback in September. So the statistics are there for a setup for a Santa Claus rally. The Fed doesn't meet again until November, so there will be a vacuum of news on monetary policy for several weeks. Congressional dysfunction may deliver a government shutdown again in November now instead of late September. There's not a lot of like super negatives going on. Well, no, I did. see. I got to listen to my own cooking, right? Uh, we do have some super negatives right now. We have high inflation. We have interest rates that are up. That gives you an option to buy in stocks. We have pandemic savings that have shrunk. And we have a labor market that's cooling. Listen to this. Uh, paper receipts. Um, I, I think this is one of those f statistics from like, I used to not care. Paper receipts use 3.7 million trees and 10 billion gallons of water annually. There is a bill before a California legislature where it's going to require businesses to offer you the option of an electronic receipt before printing one. I'd have no problem with that one passing. And most of my family lives on the East Coast, and they can call me a wacky California. Like, you, you can't even get a receipt in California? Enjoy the earthquakes. <laughs> yes, that's my family. Um, I don't even like receipts. Like the number one thing I throw out of my pockets before putting the, my clothes in the washer, receipts, it feels like. Elsewhere, what do we have to hit up? Um, today, the ongoing worries about market rates, interest rates. That turned sharply higher after the jolts report, the job openings. Job openings totaled 9.61 million in August following a revised 8.9 million in July. Breath is decidedly negative with decliners leading advancers six to one. Feels like a little bit of a whoosh. Do you remember in 2022 when we had down markets? The one thing that I, I analysts and people like me kept saying is we kind of need that whoosh. We kind of need that whoosh where people panic and there's that day where there's 10 to one losers to winners. Atlanta Fed uh, President Rafael Bostic says the Fed is not in a hurry to hike rates again, thinks the Fed could hold rates at higher levels for a long time. That seems to be the prevailing message these days. McCormick, spice makers under pressure for lackluster earnings, saying China has been slow to recover. Now, that's the most interesting thing out of this probably for me. Um, China is trying to resume their economy after its COVID-related disruptions. China's growth is expected to be less than McCormick originally anticipated. China's slower to come back online. What else do we have to hit? House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is going to hold a vote on his leadership challenge today at 11 Pacific, 2 p.m. East Coast time. I don't, my, 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 my doctor's gut is that that's not causing the market stress. I could be wrong on that one. Maybe it's another thing. Interesting research that I did yesterday on NVIDIA. NVIDIA is best known for designing server chips for artificial intelligence. They also have a graphic processing unit for video games. They also have a cloud service for corporate customers that develops AI with those chips. And they're competing with Amazon Web Services right now on that. Video's got some little little things, little pokers in the oven and pokers in the fire that are starting to heat up. 
I know you're saying that. I didn't see them competing with Amazon Web Services. I know. I think that's fair to say. 800-516-1220 to get your calls in the air. If you ever want to drop me an email, you can drop me an email, rob at robblackshow.com. It's rob at robblackshow.com. Um, Meta Platforms is considering charging $14 a month in the European Union for Instagram without advertising. My kids don't seem to mind the advertising. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. Big event coming up at the end of October in Santa um, San Mateo at the Crown Plaza. You can sign up for the event. It's a daytime Saturday at robblackshow.com. Questions about Social Security? Check out the Social Security Retirement Guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com, powered by EP Wealth. I'm Rob Black. Thanks for listening to the show. Beyonce. Her Renaissance tour is coming in December to the movie theaters. It's going to be a hit just like Taylor Swift's. Um, you know who's really happy about this? Movie theaters. Not going to get too caught up in it and say we should do this every year. But it would be wise for companies like AMC to figure out beyond their typical crutch of Hollywood movies. I was looking at the December slate for movies. Typically a time to enjoy the movie theater, right? Family, a little downtime and during the holiday period. And none of the three movies that are big title days look like something I want to see. Um, and one of them I just learned about for the first time today. I'm like, is that a remake? Wonka? Yes, there's another story about Willy Wonka um, coming in December. On top of Wonka, one of the other big blockbuster hits. I know you're saying, haven't we seen Wonka? It kind of feels like we have. Aquaman and Lost Kingdom, which is getting such bad reviews. Uh, don't know why. First one, or was there two already? But at least one it was entertaining, but... I felt a little um, overwhelmed with the visuals. They say the visuals in this one are awful. But the color purple's coming out. I'm like, wasn't that a movie with Oprah? And... Wasn't it? Didn't Steven Spielberg win? It? Like, yes, yes. Is it a, is it a, I don't even know. I'm guessing it's a remake, right? So I think it's pretty cool that Beyonce is coming out with a film at a time where I'm not one to see a Beyonce concert because I can't name three songs. It's just not my typical, uh, how shall we say, radio mix or a streaming profile. I tend to go with the Killers and the Foo Fighters and things along those lines, right? We all know I'm independent. Indie alternative rock. Um. But it's unclear what Beyonce's film could open with in December as tickets just went on sale on Monday. Industry observers expect Swift's concert film due in theaters on October 13th will open to at least 100 million in ticket sales. I think the cultural impact, the brand enhancement, and is clear. The Beyonce and the Swift releases also are a part of AMC's new revenue generation strategy by bypassing this typical studios, traditional studio model. I think that's a good thing for AMC. I still want to own the stock. Um, theaters have been playing live or recorded concerts for years. And typically Taylor Swift or Beyonce would have gone through another channel to get this released. Um, I find that interesting. Not like... Ooh, craziest thing I've ever seen. But if they can get a hundred million out of Taylor and a hundred million out of Beyonce, I think theater chains would be pretty pleased with those numbers. What else do we have to hit on as far as stories today? Um, October. Not a lot going on until earnings season starts up in a couple of weeks. Job openings unexpectedly increased in August. 
hitting the highest level since May. The number of open jobs increased, raising questions of whether the job market is cooling fast enough to please the Federal Reserve. So we have companies are posting job openings. Hey, I have a need for a, a writer. I have a need for a line cook. There were 9.6 million at the end of August, an increase from the 8.92 million in July. As long as there's numbers that are trending higher, employers are going to have to pay more money to get that person, to get that job filled. Or like we've seen, maybe you'll go into a restaurant and go, hey, this place is really tough to get reservations for, but you only see 60% or 70% of the seats seated because they can't get enough staff to fill the positions. Um, so it's an underperforming economy. Job openings is a tough one in my book. Um, again, it's not the worst case scenario, but I'm not jump up and down on this news either. So we want the job market to cool so that it cools wage inflation. You can't go ask for another job unless there's another job opening out there is the idea. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter, Rob Black Show, YouTube, Rob Black Show, taking a look at how the markets reacted to the job openings. I'm seeing some of my more speculative positions underperform today. And those would be things like Airbnb or NVIDIA. Um, companies like Apple, you're seeing stick in there. Microsoft, seeing them stick in there. Um, but you're seeing some pretty big moves on companies that are valued for perfection. It's kind of a shoot first, ask questions later kind of thing. Rolling over 401k when the market's down is a question everyone should ask. When is a good time to roll over your 401k? If you have a long time ahead of you, the answer is it's not as important. Deciding on how to manage your 401k in a down market can be unnerving. The stakes are high especially since you may be like get one company and move to another company and say, let's go ahead and move it. And then the market goes down for those two weeks. You're like, what did I just do? And you have to think about the ramifications. Should you cash out your 401k in a down market? I do not think so. I don't think you, I think the best way to get wealthy is from age 20 to 60, putting money into your 401k and then take it out as late as you can. Whatever the required minimum distribution age will be for you. That's when you start taking it out at the latest time possible. You want those three years of cash, things along those lines are important to do correctly. You can find me online at robloxshow.com. While you're there, you can check out my YouTube shorts. I'm doing YouTube shorts now that are really gaining a lot of traction. I love feedback on those. I need feedback on those. You can learn more at YouTube, Rob Black Show. It's Rob Black Show at YouTube and a big event coming up with Chad in San Mateo at the Crown Plaza. Hi. October. It's a Saturday day event. Sign up at robloxshow.com. Think you're in good shape for retirement? Find out how you're really doing with the seven tests of retirement readiness. Join Rob Black and CFP Chad Burton of EP Wealth Advisors Saturday, October 28th in San Mateo. They'll walk you through these seven tests to find out whether you are really ready for the retirement you want. Rob will provide timely commentary, and Chad will share specific strategies for taxes, income, long-term care, safe money, investing, life goals, and more. If you have at least $500,000 in investable assets and want to retire better, pass on your estate, and minimize taxes, this event is for you. Find out if you're on the right track with the seven tests of retirement readiness, Saturday, October 28th, 10 a.m. to noon at the Crown Plaza in San Mateo. Space is limited, so sign up today at robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. Can you pass all seven tests? Sign up today online at robblackshow.com.